לתזמורת הפילהרמונית שלנו יש סדרה ושמה אורחיו הצעירים של המאסטרו. והפעם המאסטרו שתמיד מארח את אורחיו הצעירים הוא האורח שלנו. שלום מאסטרו. שלום אריק. You know, we pianists cannot take our instrument. We must be ready to play on every instrument. The violinists, they slept their fiddle with them. How about you? Do you prefer to conduct your own orchestra or to be a guest conductor? Absolutely my own orchestra. I don't like to say my own, but people that I've grown up with. And I have never guest conducted too much. There are many great orchestras, even today, that I have never conducted. But being a guest conductor, just hit and run, it's wonderful. No commitment, no responsibility, yeah. no fundraising. No auditions. <laughs> no, I don't enjoy that. No vad. Uh, in those four rehearsals, even with the greatest orchestra, I cannot achieve what I do with my Israeli chavarim. I can't do that. I like to tell you a story which you love to hear. Um, one of your best concerts that I heard ever, I heard many wonderful concerts from you, but one of the best was in Warsaw, and you conducted the Munich Philharmonic. You jumped in to replace Chili Bidaki, Chili Bidaki yeah. who was very ill, yeah. and you did Bruckner number four. The orchestra stayed in the same hotel I stayed. They told me actually without rehearsal. You just came and conducted yeah. Bruckner number four. And this was just gorgeous, unforgettable. And I didn't never hear Chely Bidaka doing it. I felt that he was standing behind me. It was a spiritual experience for me. And I let the orchestra just play. And I would guide them. I would have to control it here and there. But they were so used to his way of doing it, I didn't interfere. And that's an art that one has to develop. Uh, I didn't know I could do it, because I'd never done it before. I admired him very much as a conductor and musician. I knew him quite well personally. Uh, and it was his spirit that was guiding them. It was such a great concert, I wanted to come backstage to tell you that, but they told me that you and Avi Shoshani just went to a private small aircraft. Yeah, I had to come back to Israel. Unbelievable. So you did Bruckner number four without rehearsal, and the orchestra players who stayed, as I said, in the same hotel told me after the concert that this was the perfect combination. They were tortured to death by Chili Bidaka in the rehearsals, and then you came and you let them play. But play the way he had prepared them. How did you know? Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know. Some things, of course, I had to. The tempo of the third movement is my tempo. I don't know what he's doing there. But the basic flow of the music, of the first movement, etc., that came from him. So this and you feel that as you go along. So this was the art of acceptance. Yes. There's a certain humility that uh, is necessary for that also. You have a magical community. I'll tell you the exact opposite. I once conducted the Berlin Philharmonic in the Symphony Fantastique of Berlioz. Now, you know, I have my conception of what this should be like. And they had just finished a tour with Herbert Karajan with this symphony. Now, I didn't hear that. I came and rehearsed, and nobody told me, look, we did it this way or that way. They just let me do it my way. And they told me how different it was, and I didn't know, but they also reacted differently. That's also a great orchestra. That's a flexibility from the other side. So being a guest conductor, for you, you have a magical communication. You can make communication like this. For you, it's a, it's a wonderful challenge. Maybe you can express your, your... Yeah, but I know those, the Vienna and Berlin, I know them very well. So I don't consider me as a guest conductor there. I've been going there for 40 years. But I did, the, for the first time, about three years ago, Konzertkebau, Bruckner 8. And I chose the Bruckner 8 because I had heard them playing many years ago in Vienna with their great conductor, Edward van Benum. So when they asked me, I went for the first time, I said, let me do the same piece. And uh, I found great communication with them, and it went well. 
But I was a guest conductor, no doubt. And here you are our conductor in Israel for about 45 years. Well, no, next year, 2009, will be 40 years as music director. I see. 40. And 45 years since the first concert. More now. More. 61. And um, to be responsible for every aspect of the orchestra, as I mentioned before, fundraising, it's... it's... But we do it together. It's a, it's a wonderful, ideal situation. We don't agree with everything, we discuss, but we do it together. You chose actually every player in the orchestra. T today, almost. almost. I think Zevik Dorman is the only one I didn't engage. <laughs> oh, he came with the same year as I did. But uh, one of the last retirees, Menachem Breuer, retired a few years ago. And I miss the older musicians, I tell you. I grew up with them. They taught me a lot. You know, people like Mordechai Reshman and uh, Uri Shocham, uh, Chaim Taub. I can go on and on. Uh, I learned a lot from them. Not even when they're speaking, just by their playing. Do you know how many concerts you have conducted here in Israel, our orchestra? No, no. I can tell you. Yeah? I asked the orchestra to give me the statistics. You will believe Don't it. Don't scare me now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, altogether, 3,000, over 3,000 concerts. No, no, it's not possible. Among them, 800 abroad. I see. 800 concerts abroad? Yeah. In 19 different places in Israel. Not only Tel Aviv, Haifa, Jerusalem. 19 different places. You did a lot of homework. Yeah, they did it <laughs> for us. They did it for us. And you conducted more than 49 original Israeli compositions. You studied all the scores, and you, sometimes you conducted it by heart. You do Not it often. Of <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you, you do <laughs> often conduct by heart. Yes, but not Israeli compositions. And you conducted for more than 65 young Israeli That I believe. And one of them is now on the screen for you. Just as we introduced Salim Aboud years ago, and now he already played with us in Europe last year, it is my dream also to have now an Israeli Arab playing in the orchestra, not just take one as a soloist. Of course, he deserves it. He's very talented. His family is very close to me. Uh, but through the new music school that we have started, at the Tel Aviv University, Buchmann Meta, through the good offices of my friend Yossele Buchmann, who is, you know, supporting us in every way he can. Uh, we are going to start new programs, sending our musicians into the Arab towns and seeing what talent there is, bringing them, training them with us. And even if it takes another eight, ten years to have an Israeli Arab sitting in our orchestra is really, it's not my dream, it should be our dream. It should be a dream for Israel, not only in music, but in every way of life. You know, it's quite amazing. It was easier for you to choose a soloist than a player in the orchestra. Yeah, because this soloist is like a little rose amongst in a cactus garden. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. Salim is a native of Nazareth. Yes. I know that you visited his home. You know his family. Yes, and we, we played a concert in Nazareth last year with only for Arabs. And after every piece, there was standing ovation. They were so enthusiastic. We must develop this area. And you invited him to play with you recently in Europe. In, in yeah, he played in Amsterdam and Copenhagen with great success. 
and he deserves it. And now you have invited another Arab boy, Bashar Haruni, to yes. play with you. He will play in the... Uh, he will play a Leonard Bernstein memorial concert in Beersheba. It's amazing, the school of music, Buchmann Meta. It was, in former time, the Rubin Academy in Tel Aviv, which yes. you visited many times yes. and conducted your uh, orchestra. Now it's your orchestra. And since uh, two years, uh, it's your name. Well, it's my conception that the teachers, the leading members, of the Israel Philharmonic teach orchestral playing. We do not interfere with the teaching of the solo instruments. They are violin teachers, voice teachers, great piano teachers like you, who continue their work, but especially with orchestral instruments, 95% don't become soloists. They go in orchestras. If they are good, they go into good orchestras. So what we are doing now is sending our concert masters, leaders of the sections, to work with the sections. Then Zevik Dorman, as the conductor, puts them together. Once a year, I conduct a concert with both academy and Tismoric musicians together. So we are doing this systematically, and we don't want Israeli kids to just go to Germany and New York to study. They should study here. And we have the best orchestral instruments and professors to teach them how to play a Mozart symphony and how to play Beethoven Fifth Symphony Fugato to the cello and basses. Uh, we need that education and it's happening uh, under the, you know, the umbrella of Tomer Lev, who is the head of the school, and I'm very satisfied with what's happening. You know, it's a huge change of attitude because years ago the kids used to come to Israel to become a soloist. Every violinist wanted to become a yes. soloist. Unlike Germany or America, where they come to school to learn to play an orchestra. Yeah. Well, you know, a soloist is a phenomenon that you can't stop. He will be a soloist whether you want it or not. The rest must, and the parents have to know it too, that everybody is not hyphens. That the parents must know that my son or my daughter is very talented and she or he will go in the best orchestra. And this is the goal. Years ago, when there was an opening uh, in Israel Philharmonic Orchestra, you used to accept uh, sometimes players from abroad. Yeah, if we can't find them here, we have to go abroad. But in recent years, I suppose they are 100% uh, from Israel. Or... Not completely 100%. Our first horn is American Christian. <laughs> uh, we are very proud. He is part of the Irgun, James Cox. He is now an uh, adopted Israeli. Uh, I know that you received a young percussionist uh, whom you saw on our show on television, you told yes. me. That is, Kadu. Yeah. I saw them on your show. I couldn't believe it. They are now going to play with me next year with the New York Philharmonic because they are absolutely... Uh, they played in Verbier last year and I'm so proud of them, really. Um, let's come back to Salim. Salim was born in Nazareth as a young boy. He never heard classical music. He was not privileged like you to have a father who was a conductor. Yeah. And yet he became a classical musician with your support. Well, thank, you. thank God he has wonderful parents who, who developed that, who nurtured that, and a, a teacher like you. This, this combination of parents and teacher is very important. And now you said... That Daniel Barenboim had a father who was parent and teacher together. That doesn't happen very often. Um, you did many concerts uh, hosting young Israeli soloists. Uh, one of them was Salim. And uh, we would like to show you now another yes. young Israeli player, yeah. uh, privileged to play under your baton.
See, this is the perfect example of a talented youngster, even an immigrant, who played as a young kid with the orchestra, and now he's one of our solo clarinetists, Yehudin. You... This is the way, this is the logical evolution. A conductor like you, who is so charismatic, is supposed to uh, be self-centered, and you always took care of young artists. I remember what you did for Fima Bronfman. This is really unforgettable. Well, here with FEMA, in America with Midori, I love to hear young people growing, and I don't take advantage of them. We introduce them, and then we say, now go back to school, I'll see you in five years' time. Uh, that's what I did with Midori in New York, with Bronfman and with uh, Shlomo Mintz. Uh, but, Eric, you brought a lot of people to me. You know, with you here and Dorothy Delay in New York. With FEMA, I, I'll never forget it. Uh, after his great success, everybody fostered him, adapted him. But you were the first one to invite him to play with you abroad in yeah. Montreal. You remember the country. Montreal. And actually, every orchestra you had, you had the Montreal and then Los Angeles and then New York. You always invited him. Yeah. I'll never forget. He played with me in Los Angeles, Rachmaninoff Third Concerto. And Simon Wiesenthal was in the audience, I didn't know, and he came to me afterwards. And he hugged me and started crying. And he says, how many of these kids have they murdered? And we both started crying. Once you invited FEMA to be a shadow pianist for Horowitz, with you in New yes. York, because we all suspected that Horowitz will not show. Yeah, yeah. And finally Horowitz played. Yes. And FEMA had to wait. I know. You're right. I, I forgot about that. How is it to accompany Horowitz? Wonderful. No problem. You know, with these great artists, there is a flexibility uh, that we don't find it sometimes with the slightly lower level. Lower level of people who just practice 10 hours a day and can only play it in this one way and they are not listening to the orchestra. They don't conform with soloists in the orchestra. And this is sometimes lacking in young, young soloists. Uh, we, we know at once he doesn't know what the orchestra is doing. She only practiced, and Horowitz, Rubinstein, Isaac Stern, and then the other generation like Daniel and Pinkale, they're all listening and playing. Is there it's any... a continuous chamber music, <coughs> and was with Horowitz the same. Is there any soloist you wanted to play with, and you have not yet achieved your dream? Uh, I never accompanied Richter. It didn't happen. Yeah. No reason. He didn't like to fly, and he had to fly a to Los Angeles, he didn't want to do that. Is there any orchestra you wanted to conduct? Not really. Uh, I'm very happy with my home orchestras. Uh, now there's an orchestra developing in Valencia where I'm doing this ring project of Wagner. The, really a great orchestra that was chosen by Lauren Mazel. Uh, he went to different countries and he's put an orchestra together from 23 different countries and one would think on paper this doesn't work but when one works with them you get a, suddenly a Wagner sound coming out <laughs> and that's your accomplishment so you were in Montreal and Los Angeles and New York and Munich and Valencia and Firenze but always in Israel always yes. with Israel Philharmonic for so many years. Isn't it a Guinness record of uh, one conductor? With You're one... the st expert <laughs> on statistics, you tell me. I can't remember anything like that. How, how is it possible? You know, after a while, we all know your weaknesses, we all know you, you cannot surprise us anymore. How is it possible? It just, uh, it's one concert after another. And planning, of course, in the future. Uh, there's great planning going on all the time, especially with the Israeli. You know, we travel a lot. A lot of people outside want us to come.
or else no weaknesses. And you can always surprise. You can always surprise. Like what? I don't know. New repertoire, new inter interpretation. You are doing it. Well, because we are thinking all the time. You know, this Bruckner 8th, which I did here this month, I had not played with the orchestra for over 20 years. 80% are different. 20% that remained, I don't know what they remember even. So we worked at it from scratch. And for me also it is from scratch. Uh, it's, it's something that one has such love when you have an orchestra that responds, that you can see they really love it. In the beginning, the first rehearsal, many people think it's long, it's tedious, all the time, tremolos with the strings, you can see them, but as they see the second, the adagio developing, and what a monument this adagio is, by the time the concert comes, it's, uh, everybody is convinced, and then you've accomplished something. You conducted for Horowitz, for Rubinstein, for everybody, for Pavarotti, and then you come here and you conduct for a little Israeli girl who plays the recorder, the block flute. <laughs> I remember you told me after such a concert that this was your debut, that you never conducted the recorder before. Was that Bracha Kol? <laughs> that was yes. Bracha Kol. <laughs> but we would like now to put on screen uh, another girl playing another wind instrument. This young lady, I believe, plays first bassoon in the Kibbutzim Orchestra. And her name is Elino Yogev. Yogev, yes. Yeah. Very talented. Very talented. Every war we had here in this country, you came to us. Weren't you afraid? No. Two, three, four million Israelis are not afraid. Why should I be? But you know, Isaac came always with you. But Isaac was a Jew. And I understand that uh, you are not 100% Jewish because, you know, in Europe everybody must have had a Jewish grandmother, but you came from India. No, I have no such claim. <laughs> I'm 100% Parsi Indian. <laughs> and every war you came to us. There were here conductors, counseling. Well, Yom Kippur, I was here already. Uh, I prefer not to talk about that. Where is home? Home is different places. Home is on the podium Adagio of Eroica. That's home. home. Home is Bombay. Home is Los Angeles too. Home is landing in Israel. I feel at home. Landing, seeing the coastline. I feel at home. Coming to the rehearsal first time, everybody's smiling, it's home. Your Hebrew vocabulary? Gunished. Vad? <laughs> Sheket? <laughs> no, many words, but uh, I'm ashamed of that. You know, I speak seven or eight languages. I should have learned Hebrew. But I come here, work 16 hours a day, <laughs> and uh, no time for ulpan. And your Yiddish is amazing, always. Yiddish can is good, Reden. <laughs> but uh, now I'm coming again to the end of my period. I'm, uh, I'm already starting to get depressed because I will only come back in July. Any dream that was not yet fulfilled? Yes. We have not played in Cairo. We have not played in Amman. And as I said, there's still no Arab in the orchestra. And we have to persevere that. Because, you know, my friend Daniel, he has a unique orchestra, the Divan. I think it's the only forum in the world where Arabs and Jews are sitting together. Maybe they are discussing, maybe they are disagreeing, but they are playing in harmony. And when they disband, because they are not 12 months together, they are sending emails. Which Israeli is sending emails to Damascus, except those kids? Maybe there are some exceptions, but it's something very healthy. 
And we have to develop it in this country too. You know, we go to the north every summer, we give a concert where Arabs and Jews sitting together. It's uh, very healthy. Two years ago, we did the Beethoven night. Both of them, all of them stood up, a standing ovation. I spoke recently to my friend Mike Strauss, the elite. You know, he doesn't make only the best chocolates. <laughs> He's involved, you know, on a weekly basis in the development of uh, Arab-Jewish relations in Akko. And I want to go there with the orchestra if it's possible, if somebody will sponsor us to go and play a free concert in Akko for the Jews and Arabs because they are living there together, like in Yafo too. There must be other places. And if they can live in Akko and Yafo together, they can live in other places. There must be a will to want to live together. Unless that, there will not be peace in this country. You can put on the map you know, an outpost here, a settlement there, but you must want to live together. Um. And we must help each other. We must help them grow economically. We cannot keep them as poor relatives. You will not be able to live with a Palestinian as an uncle and poor relative. They must be brought up. And we must help them. There must be the goodwill on our part. Young Mozart was once asked by his father how he succeeds to write this marvelous music. And he said, I look for two notes that love each other. <laughs> and we would like to finish with some Mozart, with your conducting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Maestro. Thank you for Thank coming, Zubin. Todah Rabbah. Todah. Yes, sir.